Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bronwyn and I am a skincare specialist by trade with a plus years of career level experience and also experience here on YouTube. However, that does not of course make me a registered esthetician or dermatologist. I'm just experienced, trained and qualified to recommend skincare products. Aside from that, this is my new introduction I've been trying to do for a while because I've never justified it. Um, today we're doing something I haven't done in a while and that is a makeup tutorial video and you may be wondering why has it been so long since you last did a makeup tutorial video and reason being is because like honestly I feel like ever since this whole stay-at-home situation started happening like I don't really wear makeup and because of that I just don't really have the passion like the same level of passion for it now that i did before which is totally understandable like times change years go by we lose interest in certain things and the makeup that i did do whenever i did makeup was always kind of the same but recently i did change my go-to makeup style and you guys noticed and you wanted a tutorial specifically on one of my previous videos the video that i did where i reviewed the sun by me yuja niacin line and and the Bye Bye Blackhead Bubble Cleanser. You guys love that makeup look and wanted a tutorial, so here I am gonna share it with you guys today. Now, it's actually not super different from what I normally do. I just changed a few of my techniques. One of the most noticeable differences in that look was my eyes, specifically my actual physical eyeball. And that was because I was wearing these circle lenses right here. These are really old daily lenses that I got when I was living in Japan and I have been hoarding them for years because I know you can't get them overseas. I've looked, I've hunted, I recently looked because I didn't want to recommend them if you guys couldn't get them. Um, but I'm going to share them anyway. I feel like there's a lot of alternatives out there that are super, super similar and it's just this particular brand you can't get. These are the Larme Moisture UV daily lenses in sapia moon essentially what gives them the look is they're a grayish dark brown circle lens with a 14.5 millimeter diameter and a little bit of a limbo ring they give that very mild enlarging effect to the actual eye without being too over the top and for me like i've always loved circle lenses i used to wear circle lenses so much like six seven eight years ago when i first started youtube casually and i just kind of floated away from them because i have naturally small eyes and if i go anything above a 14.5 diameter it just looks a little crazy on me you can't really see the whites of my eyes but i feel like if i want that really slight enlarging dollish look without disappearing my entire whites of my eyes then 14.5 is like max anyway to start off that look i'm going to put in those lenses right now and be right back you can see i have that slight enlarging effect on my eyes for a little bit more of a dollish look I really, really love it. I want to get back into wearing circle lenses, but like one thing that's really interesting, like when I was younger, I used to always wear those yearly disposable or half year disposable circle lenses. But like, as I've aged, I've like, I'm just dry and my eyeballs are drier. My mouth is drier. Like, and this is like a common thing apparently. So now I feel like I can only wear like three months maximum disposal one month and then dailies otherwise anything beyond that's just too like the moisture content level is just not enough for my eyes and it's really uncomfortable so if you've ever had like difficulty trying out circle lenses or fun contact lenses but you just struggle with the comfortableness of them dailies might be your option and they come in really affordable like multi-packs as well and i usually can get up to maximum three days use out of one pair of dailies if i take good care of them and if i'm not wearing them like eight hours plus per day moving on to the foundation for this look i have been re-loving my hera uv mist cushion in the shade n23 this is an oldie i don't know if they still carry this brand again this is another product i have been hoarding for so long just because like i don't know like when i love something a lot and i don't want to run out of it I hoard it instead of purchasing more like you notice a little inconsistency on my skin like there's red blotchiness there I did a I did a microdermabrasion last night and 
I'm still a little raw from it. I love cushions because they honestly make your skin look so perfect. Like, I don't know why I stopped using cushions. I think it was because I wanted to try incorporating more Western brands into my makeup tutorials. And they're just, I don't know, Western brands, like they're good for eyeshadows, but otherwise like, I prefer Asian beauty brands, specifically Korea. I did not put too much foundation on my forehead because I'm breaking out lately here. <laughs> what the funniest thing is, okay, you guys, if you have a significant other and they give you smooches a lot on your forehead and you notice you're also breaking out a lot on your forehead, that's usually the reason why. That's <laughs> not so, like every once in a while I have to tell Honey Boy to stop giving me smooches on the forehead because I have like literally a patch of like breakouts where he smooches. I'm like, please stop. Like I appreciate it and I love you, but please like stop. <sighs> because I'm going for the fringe look as per usual, I do have to use setting powder under my fringe or else it looks really greasy from all my skincare. It's already starting to look greasy even though I just washed them. <laughs> So I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury setting powder in translucent, which in my honest opinion isn't very translucent. It has like kind of a pinkish tone to it, but that's okay. Hard doing. Like it's been forever since I filmed a makeup tutorial. I forgot how difficult it is to uh, see what you're doing. <laughs> I always like to also powder like into my hairline to a degree when I'm having my fringe because like again, my skincare I have like so much skincare on all the time that I really need to make sure it doesn't get into my hairline as well, which it always does. Now, typically I don't actually like putting too much setting powder on because I feel like it's really drying. So I try to skip as much as I can. So while I do my concealer, I just kind of let that foundation set a little bit. So now I'm gonna go in with my Too Faced Born This Way concealer in the shade snow wow that's pretty light and just the smallest amount i'm actually genuinely surprised at how much concealer they give you like it's huge and it's going to take me like years probably to burn through this because you really need the smallest amount so this is the placement that i do for my concealer a little bit different i'm not really doing the whole like large chunk but i do still blend it downwards in that pattern being a concealer brush i just go in and kind of manipulate it gosh like just having these circle lenses in honestly like makes me feel like i time travel back to japan days when i was like like this whole setup right now everything about this like doing a makeup tutorial for you guys having these lenses in just feels like such a throwback honestly because the last time i wore these lenses like a lot was when i was living in japan for almost five years ago i think come april it will be five years which is so sad so sad like putting a little bit of concealer on my chin as well even though i don't technically need any concealing there but i just feel like it kind of cinches the chin a little bit and makes it look a little more elongated and then because that brush doesn't give like the perfect skin texture i like going in with my finger after so i start off on my chin because my finger does pick up some of that pigment and i don't want my chin to be significantly lighter than the rest of my face then on my tip of my nose i go and buff and pat it out and then i make my way to the eye area so that most of the color deposit is still on my eyes where I have dark circles. Speaking of dark circles, a lot of you guys often ask me in skincare regard, like what kind of eye cream and products for the eyes I would recommend for dark circles. But the thing is, like I know we all hate hearing this and we don't wanna, we don't want it to be true, but dark circles are not only natural, but to a degree hereditary. And we get them as we get older, because we're aging, our skin is always getting thinner, especially around the eyes. Like I have permanent dark circles as well. And no matter how much skincare I apply on my under eye area, it does not improve the darkness of that area because it's just a natural thing that happens with age. 
due to thinning skin and sinking of the eyes. And you can buy all the luxurious eye creams you want, but they're not going to get rid of your dark circles. And a lot of a lot of eye creams that claim to get rid of dark circles actually contain pigment in them, like highlighter essentially to reflect light away. So it gives you the impression that the eye cream is working and getting rid of your dark circles, but then you'll notice it always wears off. Eye creams really are glorified face creams. There's really no difference to them other than no oils generally being in them because oil travels into the eye, no acids in them, and then that's, that's really it. There's nothing about an eye cream that's going to improve your dark circles and prevent them. So if you are wondering what you can do about your dark circles, you're really tired of nothing working on them and you want some advice and tips, the only thing that's actually going to make a difference is getting under eye filler. And I know that can be scary and nobody really wants to do it, but it's the honest truth. And it is something that you do need to consider if your dark circles really are that bad, that it's just kind of driving you mad. Otherwise, your only other option is to just use concealer daily, which I do, but I'm thinking like maybe in the next few years, I might consider under eye filler if my dark circles progress and get worse over time, which they may, they may. Honestly, all of us without makeup look exhausted to a level if you're like 24, 25 and older, you know? For my contour, I have been loving the Rome and contouring powder in the shade Light. Because I'm no longer really tan, I don't really want to have a really dark bronzed up summertime con contouring powder. This one's been a great option for giving me definition that I seek without being super heavy and obvious. And that's kind of like the look I'm trying to go for these days. I'm trying to revert back to that softer style that kind of like Korean inspired makeup looks because I feel like not only did I love that look, but I feel like you guys also loved that look as well. And of course I want to please us all not just myself. So doing that jawline contour, really focusing the deposit under my chin for a cinching effect. This gives also a slimming effect. So not only will it sharpen the jawline, but it will also make it a little more angular. Now, if you wanted an even more angular look, you just pick up more contour and only put it right under that jawbone, especially there. And then uh, a little bit goes on the forehead as well. Not too much, because my bangs pretty much do that for me now. But just so that the color is a little more consistent from top to bottom. My bangs didn't turn out as cute today as they did the day that I filmed that video. Like some days I feel like my bangs turn out great and other days like just not so great. And then I take my angled like 3D Kabuki brush from Sigma. I don't know if they still carry this. And I just go and do the edges of my nose, following the natural shape all the way to the ends. Then I go to the top for that button effect, not right at the tip, but I just kind of like separate the ball of my nose from the bridge of my nose. And just kind of do a nice line across and just wiggle and buff it out so it's soft. And then take everything else and do it on the under part. And then I also like to put it on my nostrils because it looks, in my opinion, a little odd if you have like, I don't know, like this is shaded, but then your nostrils underneath aren't shaded. Then recently I like defining my, my filtrum a little bit by putting a line right there. And then whatever is left over under the nose and then whatever is left over, I usually really gently carve out my nostrils as well. It's just so that the colors are all symmetrical. Well, not symmetrical, but like it's not like the bridge of my nose is brown and then nothing else is brown. That just seems odd. And then buff it out with my finger. I can buff it out with my finger because like I don't, I really don't powder my face much at all. I do like the lightest amount. So that way there's still 
moisture on my skin so when I use my finger to buff things out it doesn't lift the foundation that's another thing that I do love about Korean cushions is they are lightweight and really kind of created and formulated to be malleable especially when on the skin because the whole idea of Korean cushion foundations is that you use them to touch up yourself throughout the day so they're designed to kind of move around on the face throughout the day and be really just good like blendable so there that's kind of my nose contour for my blush I've been using the same blush all year like I'm obsessed this is the Innisfree blusher in the shade three it's kind of just a really nice peachy color that's super natural I pick that up on a tapered blush brush and I just kind of do the same thing so I smile a little bit and get those apples up the cheeks and pull it around and a pat 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 sometimes I deposit too much on one cheek compared to the other which happened right now and then whatever else is left over on the bridge of the nose. And then I pinch the top and I do the underside of the nose as well. I feel like that looks nice and cute, like you kind of just blew your nose or like you've been in the cold and it's cute for the winter, I think. For highlighter, I've been using the same that I've been using for the past year as well. This is the Sleek Makeup contouring or not contouring highlighting palette in cleopatra's kiss no idea if they still carry this and as per usual i mix the two highlighting powder shades the one over here that's a pinkish one and then the one over here that is a gold and just a small brush high points of my cheeks as always and kind of in the C. Going in with a dense shadow brush, maybe it's a medium shadow brush, so I pick up the same two shades. And top of my nose, as always, this is my favorite contouring method. When I figured this contouring method out halfway through living in Japan almost five years ago, it just kind of, well, I guess this would be more four years ago that I started doing this technique. It just kind of really changed like the overall appearance of my nose and I just love it. It's just so cute. Now this is where you guys get interested where the eyes come into play and recently I've been using the Born This Away by Too Faced Natural Nudes palette. I got this back in maybe like mid-November and I've been obsessed specifically with the shade I think it's Warm Rose. Yeah, Warm Rose is like my go-to. It's really just like my standard, a very neutral, muted kind of, is it, I'm not too sure if it's warm or cool tone red, maybe it's warm, but it's a very neutral and not too dramatic. Almost like the only color that I use, to be honest. I'm really just like super into this look. So picking it up on a more fluffy medium shadow brush, I just pat it on to my eyelids, starting all over there and then kind of working my way out from that inner corner to kind of my brow end. And I really kind of create like a outward shape. So it goes from more narrow to more wide and big to give more of a elongated eye look. This is the same eyeshadow method I've been doing for years. And again, this is why I kind of stopped doing makeup tutorials because I've noticed I've just kind of like found what works with me. Like I definitely am not someone who has a face shape that can do any eye makeup look and pull it off, you know? And I was starting to feel like a lot of my makeup tutorials were just kind of the same thing but done differently. But I guess that's kind of like the world of makeup like there's only so many looks you can do unless you want to become like a special effects makeup person or like you want to do the drag techniques and that's just not me you know i just i've never been into drag looks i've always loved the softer more more wedding-ish themed looks or even a better way of explaining it is more of the korean inspired or korean style methods that are just like really wedding inspired makeup looks and i just kind of felt like the competition for being a makeup person on youtube was just so fierce for the english market that it was just something that i didn't find myself as into anymore 
you know? There we go. So that is the overall eyeshadow. Then just taking a dense blending brush, I just like to go in and kind of soften that transition point before the brow, just so it's less bulky. So where it really gets more dramatic is the glitter part. And I have been obsessed with just that whole glitter not all over the eye, but in specialized areas. And this is the One Size Cosmetics Glitter in Penthouse or Pea House. Is it, is it Penthouse or is it Patrick House? I don't know. Either way, it's a really stunning rose gold glitter. And I, what I love about it is it's those chunky glitters and not that consistent frosted glitter that's so apparent in a lot of Western eyeshadow brands that it's almost exhausting and why I love this being more of a chunky separate glitter is that's really consistent with Korean makeup brands and that's how they get that really like kind of like a sparkly eye that's not dramatic like it's a very like wearable glittery eye so I just pat the smallest amount of that to the center of my eyelid and then with my finger I buff it out because although this is like a really pretty separate glitter, it can easily be too much just because a lot does deposit from it. And I just kind of like buff it around and then I take a really even smaller amount as much as I can possibly get smaller and put it right directly below, kind of like in that spotlight effect. And then I try to get the smallest amount as well on the inner corner, but sometimes the pigment deposits too much. And just again, buff it around. But you see what I mean? It's just really, really like wearable. It's super wearable. I actually started doing this look in the summertime, but what really makes a difference is how I've been doing my eyeliner and the circle lenses. Those really change the, the look drastically. And I kind of just find any glittery product here. I have the ColourPop Sailor Moon palette and I just take that shade with my pinky finger, the white one. It's a really frosted kind of look. The reason why I use my pinky finger for this is because it's a kind of a creamy consistency and it doesn't pick up whatsoever with brushes. And then I just kind of lightly go over my brow bone. Naturally, I don't really love using my finger to do my eye makeup, but there are some formulas that just really only work with your finger. <laughs> Specifically these creamy textures and then the glitter to not get too much deposit. My eyeliner method really changed recently. And it's, it's funny because it's not like a, it's not a very, crazy difference but it's different enough that it makes a big impact on the shape of my eyes so taking my heroin make eyeliner in the shade brown i always use brown japanese eyeliners they are the best like convert now it will change your life but essentially what i do is i pull out and make a line that's almost straight like almost straight and then I start maybe a third out. So if you were to divide your eyeball into thirds, I start out on the top outer third and kind of pull it all the way to where my wrinkle of my eyelid stops. And then connect it slightly below the tail end and then fill it in. And then I just kind of like even it out so it's not too downward facing but still more of that straight with a slight flick oh i'm messing it up oops i'm messing it up my hands are shaky i haven't had my breakfast yet i've only had coffee and that's kind of it like i'm really going for that chunky larger eyeliner look these days what i like about it is you can literally just take your fingernail and buff out the tail end mistake there we go and then I only go into the inner corner under the eye and connect that to where my eyelashes 
begin. And then just ever so slightly pull it out onto my tear duct. But I just, I love brown eyeliner. Like if this was black eyeliner, it would just look too much, but because it's brown, you can get away with it. As you can see what I mean, I don't always get it perfect, especially because my eyes aren't symmetrical, um, but it plays off well in video and cameras and stuff. Going in with my Majolka Majorca eyelash curler that I've had for years curling my lashes and if you guys know me if you've been watching my channel for a long time you probably know the mascara I'm gonna use I'll give you a minute to guess did you guess Majolka Majorca Lash King mascara always this is my all-time holy grail mascara I don't even waste time with other mascaras Honestly, anytime I've used another one, it's just it's just not been as good. This one is a high fiber mascara that really not only builds volume but length. You won't see a good, like the best impression of it right now because I'm on the very end of it. So I do struggle to get some product out of it. I have to buy a new one. But I don't even know, you guys. I don't even know how many of these I've gone through over the years. Like, I just really don't waste my time with other mascaras. And trust me, I have like a lot of mascaras because I've been like gifted mascaras. I've I've just made attempts to try other ones, and they just really don't cut it. I feel like this look is a lot more fun if you also have lash extensions on. Like I love it with lash extensions, my gosh. Okay, so that's it for the eyes. For the eyebrows, honestly, I'm super guilty lately of just skipping the eyebrows because my bangs cover them anyways. And it's like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to stream or like make a YouTube video, you know? But on the days that I do feel like I need to commit, I've been loving the NYX Professional Precision Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe. And so I just go in like this. My microblading that I got like three years ago is pretty much worn off almost completely. There's like a few strokes that remain, but otherwise it's almost gone. And I really would love to get it done again, to be honest, but yeah. Anyway, I always focus starting off in the center part of my eyebrow and then the tail bit. And then I just kind of put like random little strokes around the front because you don't want the front to be the same density as the tail. So just kind of a nice soft look like that. Let me just open up my curtains. And then this side, this eyebrow is naturally way thicker than my other one. I just have more hairs on this side, so I don't do as much. Just again, really focusing on that tail and then just a few strokes in the areas that are a little sparse. Oops, I broke it. Anyway, that's kind of it for my eyebrows. And then going in with the spoolie side, I was really into eyebrow gel and using hairspray as my eyebrow gel in the summertime when I wasn't actively having my bangs on. But in the winter time, it's easier to have a fringe because you're not sweating, you're not getting super sticky. So I don't really feel a need to have my brows gelled because more often than not, they're covered by my bangs. So I just kind of been leaving it at that. Wow, I'm really getting crusty under my nose. My skincare is not sitting nicely. In the video, I can't honestly remember if I had lip liner on or not, but I do frequently apply it. I use Max Strip Down. It's a really nice, very natural lip shade, especially if you're someone whose color is really neutral peachy tones like myself. And I just go in and define my lip. I sometimes, ooh, there's a hair there. I sometimes overline a little bit because it gives a more lifted, snatched lip appearance. And I just kind of really lightly do it. I don't like, oh, 
be messing it up. Like the thing I like about this lip liner is like if you mess it up, it's not the end of the world. And then what I've been doing to like kind of alter the appearance of my lips is I'm just really only applying it like on the upper lip and then the outer corner and then the lower lip, I just kind of blend inwards. So once that looks nasty like that, I go in with my finger and buff it all out. I've never liked a harsh lip liner look, but I love that it gives a nice light definition to the lips. And then what I do is I, I really just love the gradient effect. It's like a low commitment, full lip look, you know? And I just like really lightly go around the upper edge and just really soften that overall line. And if there's any of unevenness, I just like take a clean finger and pull my foundation into it. And that's kind of almost it. I finished it off with this lip tint that I got from Rome Anne's in the shade Pumpkin. It's from their Handbook edition. I don't know if it's like a permanent collection. If not, I'm gonna be really upset because I'm obsessed. I've been waiting years, you guys, for Korean makeup brands to come out with lip tints that aren't fluorescent. And I just like, in the middle. Right into those corners as well, so we get that elongated look. You really don't need too much. But you see with what I mean that my lips are kind of naturally uneven, like this side always comes down a little bit more. Not that it comes down more, it's just this side has more of a defined ridge, while this side just kind of like merges into my skin. And then with my finger, I just also copy what I did with the lip liner and kind of ghost it out to those outer edges really lightly without pulling it too much onto my filtrum. And there you have it guys. That is my current go-to favorite makeup look when I'm feeling like having a little bit of a heavier makeup day. You can see like even though it technically is a heavier makeup look, it really doesn't give you that feeling of heavy makeup because we didn't do any of those like drag techniques. We didn't do the high coverage foundation. We didn't do the concealer that comes all the way onto your cheeks and up. We didn't do a full lipstick with a full on lip liner. The contour was using lighter shades. So even though we are contoured for more definition, it doesn't feel like a lot, but you still get the benefit of it. And then even with the eyes, like although we used a big chunky eyeliner, we used a brown shade. So it still, again, doesn't feel like it's overly heavy and over the top. The glitter, again, because it's not that frosted thick, color it's that kind of chunky large but separated glitter you get the fun of like having that shine and that glam without being heavy and then with the overall eyeshadow it was just a one solid color as the base to really keep it simple and not heavy at all and then with the eyebrows it was just a nice light taupe color buffed out so it's again not a heavy look but you still get that satisfaction of feeling glam and extra so i hope you guys enjoyed this get ready with me chatty makeup tutorial it's been a long time since i've didn't, done one of these because honestly my makeup has just been so consistent it's been so like the same for like the longest time but i hope you guys liked it and i hope you enjoyed this kind of video if you do want more videos like these just let me know i'll try to come up with different makeup looks that we can do or we can just literally do get ready with me videos that are just slightly different looks if you guys enjoy just hanging out and chatting with me in this format but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed please subscribe to see more videos i usually do skincare related content as a skincare specialist the occasional fashion haul and styling video which i'm hoping i can do another one really soon it's been so long um, and the occasional hair tutorial and hair related video as well. So definitely subscribe. I upload one to two videos every single week. I'm going to try to start a schedule now that I have the time and flexibility to do so. Check me out on my other social media platforms such as Instagram as that's where you're going to see this kind of aesthetic styled content. I post content in this vibe on my Instagram all the time, be it fashion, be it makeup looks, be it headshots, be it 
um, skincare tips and advice, makeup recommendations, clothing recommendations, all that kind of stuff's on my Instagram and I upload stories every single day. So if you wanna stay updated on my life and what I'm getting up to every single day and chat with me there, you definitely can as well. I'm very active on my Instagram with reels and all that stuff. If you like this kind of chatty content, I actually live stream every single day, Monday through Friday, usually around 9 to 11 a.m. Toronto Eastern Standard Time. So I literally hang out with you guys live every single day or almost every single day. So if you like this, this content as well, but in more of like a hangout format and not so much the makeup, then you can catch me on my Twitch. All of my social medias are linked in the description box down below. So definitely check out that description box to catch all my social media channels and hang out with me. Otherwise, like and comment, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.